Podcast Floqueo Le podcast de la start-up engagée. Hello and welcome to this new episode of the Vera Moitié Plan. Today, for the fourth time in the history of the podcast, we are going to Sri Lanka. So you will discover the story of a unique handicraft weaving company. We are with Selina, director of Celine. So welcome and thank you so much for accepting my invitation. We'll be mainly focusing on two issues, your story and the link we can make between a social handicraft company like yours and sustainable tourism. Yes, thanks Elise, thanks for having me. Uh, before maybe we can start uh, speaking about uh, your company, can you explain us as an introduction what is happening now in Sri Lanka with the crisis? Yeah, of course. Uh, thanks Elise uh, for the question and also uh, again thank you for having me. So Sri Lanka right now I think is in a, a difficult situation and that's putting it very mildly. We are in, I think, the worst financial crisis that we have had in the history of our nation. And uh, inflation is set to hit 100% at some point. It's right now around the 76-80% uh, mark. I mean, basically, we have fuel queues which are kilometers long. We have uh, no gas. There's an impending food shortage. Um, I mean, people are really... Uh, kind of migrating out of the country. So while there's a loss of jobs, there's also a lack of human resource for the companies that are still functioning in Sri Lanka. Um, so it's, it's not a good situation. Of course, a part of it is because of the global crisis. Uh, I know everywhere in the world, you're face, facing inflation and full increase, uh, price increases, shortages, etc. But Sri Lanka more so because of the kind of mismanagement of our economy by our political leaders. Uh, you may have followed in the news recently that we, after 100 plus days of protest, a people's revolution, that we have ousted our uh, president who has recently resigned. And now uh, we are hoping that there will be political stability in the coming month or in the next few weeks so that we can get the necessary IMF uh, and other international assistance to start rebuilding our country. So stabilize first, rebuild later. So that is the kind of situation Sri Lanka is in at the moment. I mean, it's, a, it's going to be a huge uphill struggle for us to, I think, rebuild not only our businesses, but also rebuild the country. So, uh, yeah, that's, I think, uh, in a nutshell, what is happening in Sri Lanka right now. Yeah, it's important to start the, the episode with this uh, context. And so we are going to talk about your company, your director of business development for Celine, which is a handicraft company created by your mum in 1991. So you started with 15 employees, now you employ about 1,000 women. Could you tell us about this success story? Like, how do you grow a business from your home garage to being one of the largest social companies of a country? And maybe if you can explain us why is it important to, to have social company in a difficult uh, social and political context like the one you're living now in Sri Lanka? Yeah, of course. Um, so, I mean, uh, as you said as well, my mother started this company and... Uh, it was in her home garage and if I can share a personal story here, I think that will really set uh, kind of the tone or the kind of uh, situation we are in now. So, I mean, recently at a board meeting, my mother was so uh, emotional actually. I mean, after building this company, like you said, to be one of the country's largest social enterprises, I mean, she turned to me and she said, look, you know, I, I don't have the strength anymore to uh, the, or the energy anymore, to rebuild, uh, to do what it takes, to change, to innovate, to pivot, to continue to be in business. So that is the reality that we are facing, unfortunately. But I think Celine um, has been very innovative in the last three years. Uh, so when COVID hit, uh, we had, um, uh, or actually before COVID hit, since April 2019, when we had some a terror attacks during Easter Sunday. Uh, we had a very, very prosperous uh, tourism industry in Sri Lanka. 
and uh, our company of course the retail presence of our company we had five shops at that time across Sri Lanka and uh, we uh, of course were benefiting from this flood of very um, kind of mature and appreciative tourists that came into Sri Lanka right uh, mainly from the European region for instance so um, with the with the Easter bomb I think we had a massive kind of hit to our retail market and um, that is where we see now where we've only got two of our shops left uh, the tourism industry is severely down in the country but at the same time we have really managed to pivot we were also an exporting company so the past three years have been really dedicated towards growing our exports into the fair trade uh, distribution uh, systems around the world we are a fair trade certified company so we have a huge kind of uh, network of fair traders who buy from us and also different other craft, uh, handicraft and uh, textile companies that buy from us. So, I mean, to answer your question very specifically, how have we continued to secure our place as a leading handloom manufacturer, as a leading social enterprise, which puts community and environment first, is exactly what I told you. I mean, we have innovated constantly. We have always been very fast on our feet. We are not emotional when it comes to products and processes at Celine, you know, like we constantly innovate and we constantly change to be relevant and to meet the crises at that point. And that is where the company is now. So during COVID, we made face masks. Uh, we, we innovated on a sanitary pad that we, it's, it's part of a kind of a social project that we are doing. And I think most importantly out of all of this, even though my mother doesn't have the energy now and she's all very emotional, I think that generation in Sri Lanka is very emotional with what we are facing right now. We have always looked after our people. I think that's number one for us as a company. During COVID, you know, we promised never to... Um, and we promised and we, and we kept to it that we didn't let anyone go in our company. We worked so hard to give our communities consistent work. So I think that is our success, Elise, that even though the profits don't maybe not coming for the last three years, it is still a satisfactory position to be in because we are not in a negative space, but we are in a space where we have managed to keep our, pro our profits or our income and our people and our planet in one line. So I think that is what is most important and that is the success, I think the recipe behind our success. Okay, so you constantly adapt and innovate with the, the context the country is living. Exactly, yes. And there is another specificity of your company is that you almost only employ women Exactly. I would like to know why is it important for you and what is the social impact of this choice for Sri Lanka? So, I mean, employing women, uh, I think first maybe it started with that was the, it's mostly women artisans who are in the handloom industry. So I think that's how we started 30 years ago with having a focus on women. But then being woman-led and woman-owned and kind of uh, women kind of really, really being part of the growth of the company, we have very quickly realized and over the years we have created a system that enables women to work here because I personally feel and I, I know my founder and our, and our management team feels the same way that it's very, very important that business go out of their way to do what's right by the people that they are working with uh, because especially in uh, when you take women uh, our target women are people who are unable to find work in the mainstream job market because it involves them having to go uh, go to work into a town area they are married they have children they have seniors to look after so they really can't be in an eight to five job it's impossible i mean i am a recent mother myself and more than ever before, I understand how important it is for businesses, companies to have flexibility for women to continue to work. 
you know in sri lanka we have only 34% of our female like population that are women in the workforce it is the reason is because we the companies and the work environment doesn't have the flexibility so selene is really dedicated to giving the flexibility to our women we have flexible working models work from home start your business at home work in the factory uh, part time pick up your child go back home and work we have this different kind of working structures that really enable our artisans to remain at work of course naturally like i said the artisan base is females but now with me kind of taking a leadership position in the company we have a, a larger percentage of women in our man uh, of men in our management and i'm also changing that because I think it's very very important that women are the ones in decision making. We are not the only ones who are sewing and you know weaving the hand loom. So from merchandisers to marketing managers to finance accountants we really really give a prominence for women to be also part of management. So um that's that's why I mean I the, the why we do it is because I think businesses need to and i think i also explained how we do it and so yeah we are we can be very happy to say that we have around 90% of women in our company yeah i've seen that you have about 200 home workers and that they created about 20 workshops so you yeah. empower them as businesses as business business girls exactly because what we always say think is at least that when we say that we empower our people it's not just about giving them a job you know that's i think the easiest thing to do in that context it's really about enabling you know how do they save their money are they looking at their physical health their mental health their menstrual health their you know what about their leadership what about their personality do they are they aware about their rights i mean this is empowerment you know and we have a selin foundation that has been set up to do everything else other than the job so uh, we really really try to focus on what our communities need we ask them what they need and then we try our very best to integrate this holistic empowerment in the service i think that we give so when you are a part of selin we try our best to kind of take you under our wing and and help you grow as a person so that you are in charge of the choices you make you know that's empowerment so uh, i mean we are not perfect obviously i mean there's a long way to go we have a big community uh, there's a lot of attitudes in the communities too that we have to change but i think we have the structure we have the intention and we have a system that enables this so while covid has kind of covid and now the crisis has kind of made the journey a bit slower or maybe a bit difficult uh, we are very very conscious that this is the way that we want to grow for me personally as a next generation leader of selin growth will not be without this component of uh, like protecting a th- triple bottom line you know people planet profit so i mean that is what we say that that is why we say we are a social enterprise we are not a social enterprise if we just employ women you know or give work to women that's not the point the point is that we have to go out of our way to really make sure that they're fully empowered so now we can maybe talk about tourism because we met you for the background uh, we met you during a farm trip organized by Floke in Sri Lanka in May so a few months ago uh, where we could visit your factory uh, we'd like to know why why open your factory to tourists and what can sustainable tourism bring you yeah of course i mean actually the idea of this our fair trade experience uh, we considered it as a project under our foundation we had about 10 years ago actually uh, i mean we haven't been i mean tourism is this is what i always say tourism is not our core business so why we encourage people who are interested in fair trade uh interested in social enterprise interested in women empowerment and interested in like sri lanka's authentic craft sector to visit us is because we believe that that is the best way to tell our story um so that was the very first kind of thing the consideration that we had when we started this project uh because when you see what we do when you talk to our people when you visit our 
factories, our workshops. I mean, you really understand, right? Like what we are trying to do here and why it's important. And I think that's the best way for us to have ambassadors around the world. So this was the first uh, idea consideration. And of course, it's a fundraiser for our foundation. So whatever charge that we have for you know, tourists or people or you know guests coming to see us, we this is a contributing directly to the foundation to do what I told you before the mental health, physical health, leadership, um, you know financial management workshop. So it's a fundraiser for our foundation. So uh, that is why why we opened our factories. And thirdly, it is also a kind of uh, mission that we have to really promote fair trade because one of the main principles of fair trade is transparency uh, so I mean we have an open door policy I'm sure when you visited us you also saw that you can speak to anyone you can walk anywhere in the factory you don't I mean there are safety in, safety concerns in that sense uh, you know you can't go where the heavy machinery is and things like that but you know you can you can really uh, visit our factories you can talk to people I think this is uh, the third reason to ensure the transparency and the, uh, the promotion of the fair trade principles because that's also very important about uh, how we work you know how we treat our people so those are the three reasons why we promoted fair trade tourism in the factory in, in Selim and it has been very successful. I mean, we have had so many wonderful people come to us in the past 10 years. I mean, we don't encourage busloads of tourists. That's not what we do. But people who are really interested in us, they visit us and they become our friends So and become ambassadors for our brand. So, and it's a wonderful uh, kind of experience for everyone. And if you're planning to visit Sri Lanka, how can we meet you and visit uh, the factories? Um, so we have different ways. Of course, you can directly get in touch with us. I mean, you can email us at info at .lk And also, uh, we have great partners on the ground. So, for instance, Walkers Tours is one of them. I think you visited our factory as a part of their fam trip. So they are part of Walkers Tours is part of John Keel's Holdings, which is also another very responsible business in Sri Lanka. So it's a great partnership for us to have. So we are very, very selective about who we partner with, because like I said, for us, we don't want at any point for our community to feel that we are just showcasing them, you know? That's not the point. This is an authentic experience. This is a, I mean, it's real Sri Lanka. It's, that's what we want you to see. So we do not encourage busloads of people just taking photographs that's not the point that's not why we do this so this is where the partnership with uh, agencies with people like walkers tours who really understand our mission come really really uh, useful okay yeah yeah the point is really to understand what you're doing with Celine and not just watching uh, the employees working and taking pictures Exactly, because this is not a show and tell, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like I said, it's real Sri Lanka and I think the authenticity of what we do is almost priceless. We only want people who will understand and respect that process to be, to be in our factories really, you know, because this is our home and we want people who respect our home to come see us, you know. So this is where like the partnerships really, really become very important to us. Yeah, it's a, it's a very good way to promote your values, but you need to work with really good agencies. Yes. So it's almost time to close the interview. Just before I have a last question, I've watched a lecture you've made for TEDx. Yes. You said, uh, the future belongs to those who dare to be different. I just would like to ask you, which advice uh, would you give to uh, someone, to an entrepreneur, who wants to be different, who wants to, yeah, to, to do something different. Uh, I get asked this all the time. <laughs> and what I say is just, you know, I mean, each industry is different. Each, the motivation for entrepreneurs to do what they do is different. For me, for instance, it's not, it's not just about profit, really. I mean, if I wanted to be kind of, you know, making millions of dollars, I wouldn't be in this industry. But that's not the point, right? So the advice would be that 
you understand what you want from your life and if your life's calling is to um, do good, do good for people, be right by your communities, then a social enterprise model is excellent because it allows you to innovate, to be different, to, um, you know, to, to do all of that while protecting your people and planet. So if that is what you want to do, and I think that is what we should do as a world, because, I mean, I think COVID, the global pandemic has showed us that we really have to be different. We have to change the way things are done in this world, right? So if that is your vision and the mission in your life, Keep your values, never compromise on your values. Thank you. Thank you so much. So the interview is over now. If there is anything you would like to do, uh, if you, you would like to add, sorry, it's your moment. Yeah, maybe just to add that, you know, I mean, I know that Sri Lanka is seen very negatively at this moment in the international media. Uh, and this is why, why I even took the trouble to really express the context of our crisis at the moment uh, but I mean Sri Lanka is still Sri Lanka we are hospitable we are safe uh, we are a wonderful country we are a beautiful country I think with amazing people so I think what I like to add is don't forget us I know the travel advisories tell you not to come see us but you know we are ready with welcome open arms to embrace the world and uh, yeah just don't forget us so I think That's a very important message that I want to share with all the listeners. Sri Lanka needs uh, tourists. Exactly. Sri Lanka really needs to rebuild its tourism sector. Tourism was, is one of the main income sources for the country, both directly and indirectly. So there are so many people like us who have depended on the tourism sector. I mean, your contribution and support is so valuable at this moment. So... Yeah, that is uh, something that I really want to say to everyone who's listening. Perfect, thank you. Uh, thank you so much again. So we will put in the description of the podcast the link to your website if people are interested in, in buying your fat red uh, products. And so it was the last episode of the first season of the podcast. The podcast is now taking some holidays. We're coming back in September for a new season with a new concept. Uh, so we're very excited to release it. The first episode will be a game, an ecological challenge where you can play with your friends, family or company while learning things about sustainability. So thank you again, uh, Selena. Thanks, Elise. Thanks for having me.